started with our structure for this week. Okay, so this is our last beatitude that we're learning this week. Next week, we will uh, have a test on all of them. So actually, let's kind of go over them. So if you have a Bible, I don't know if you have your Bibles. Uh, let's go to Matthew 5. If you don't, it's okay. But for those who do have their Bible, we can go to Matthew 5. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 5. New Testament, first book in the New Testament. Uh -uh. Put it up here. Matthew 5. And verse 3 is where we're starting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show it up here so we can go over all of the Beatitudes so far, and then we'll go into our new one today. All right, so for those who don't have their Bibles, this is it right here, okay? So let's start with Matthew 5, 3. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Next one. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for theirs, oh, sorry, but blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Nine, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And then last week we had 10. Blessed are Bless those are who are persecuted for righteousness' for sake, for theirs is the kingdom the of kingdom heaven. Of and then here we have Matthew 5, 11. This is where we'll be this week. I'll read it first. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of ev evil against you falsely for my sake. Matthew 5, 11. So that's where we're going this week. Um, and so it's kind of similar to Matthew 5, 10, where it talks about being persecuted. And so this one is saying, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. So revile is just to like treat you wrong. Um, it's, it's basically the same thing as um, as persecuting you. And, and again, it's because they're doing it because of who you believe in. They, they're doing it because you believe in Jesus. You, they're doing it because of your faith in him. And when people do that, he says, that you will be blessed. Just like last week when he said, yours is the kingdom of heaven. He says that you are blessed when they do that because of my name. They're doing it to you because of me. So the Lord tells us that we will receive the kingdom of heaven and we are blessed whenever that happens. And so it sounds kind of strange, but it is true. He will bless us. Though they persecute us, he will bless us. Okay. So Matthew 5, 11, this is our last beatitude. Oh, sorry. So let's say it together. Matthew 5, 11. Matthew 5, 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for God. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, probably a different translation. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get into our lesson. So last week, we continued to talk about the miracles of Jesus, and we did, a, our miracles were a little different last week. Remember, he walked on the water last week, he fed the 5,000 last week, and he healed Jairus' daughter as well. So uh, today's miracle will be a little uh, similar to um, him walking on water. I mean, it's a little different, but it's dealing with the same thing, kind of, okay? So Jesus and his disciples, you know, they would often cross the Sea of Galilee to get to the other side because maybe there were some cities or towns that Jesus wanted to go and minister in. So they would often cross over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to get wherever they were going. That's why, if you remember, after he fed the 5,000, he told the disciples to do what? Cross over to the other side where he would go and meet them. So this time, so in this lesson today, Jesus and his disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee again. They're crossing the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus went to the back of the boat where he went to lay down and he went to take a nap as well. And soon he was fast asleep. So as they were moving over across the water, it was quiet. It was, you know, everything was calm. It was quiet. But then all of a sudden, as they are crossing the Sea of Galilee, a storm comes out of nowhere. A bad storm, just like how whenever we talked about when he walked on water, they had the storm. This time again, there's a storm that comes and it came out of nowhere. They were crossing over, crossing over the sea and everything was peaceful. And then all of a sudden, everything is just out of control. Everything is scary. It's crazy. Everything, the storm is going on. And so the wind is blowing stronger. The waves are getting higher and higher. And the disciples are terrified because they don't know what to do now all and so not just so as the storm starts to pick up water is coming inside of the boat they're trying to push their way through the boat just like they were the last time trying to get through the boat but this time something's different right who is with them this time jesus, jesus. and while all of this is going on guess what jesus is he's doing back. he's sleeping he's asleep laying down in the back of the boat resting it's like he didn't even know a storm was going on it's like all of this, they, they were trying to fight through this storm, get through this storm. They were trying, okay, maybe if you do this, okay, guys, help us do this. Oh man, this, but Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat. Like nothing is going on. It's like, none of this is bothering him. The storm, the disciples trying to get through the storm, nothing. And so the disciples as they're, you know, going through, trying to fight through the storm and get through it. They realize, they say, wait, Jesus is here with us in the boat. Where is he? What is he doing? And they look and he's sleeping. He was not bothered at all by the storm. I don't know about y'all, but anybody can sleep through a storm. Like if it's lightning and thundering in the nighttime, you can stay sleeping. Yeah. You can sleep through it. No. Not me, guys. I wake up. So yeah. So yeah. So if you can sleep through the storm, that's exactly how Jesus was. He was sleeping through it. All of the, you know, and now keep in mind, we're inside of our houses during a storm, right? But they were on the boat out in the open water during this storm, and he was knocked out. He was completely knocked out, like, like nothing was going on. So they look and they're like, Jesus is sleeping. He's like knocked out. They were like, uh, and so they wake him up and they said, Master, Master, you don't care if we drown, right? Because they were like, He's just simply sleeping. We're trying to fight through this storm, possibly could lose our lives in this storm. And Jesus is just sleeping. He's just knocked out, sleeping. And they're like, Master, you don't care if we drown. You don't care if we lose our lives or if we die. So Jesus wakes up. And so, you know, he, he looks at them. He stands up and he looks at everything that's going on, the storm and the waves and the dark sky, all of that. And he simply says in a quiet voice, storm, quiet down or peace, be still. And literally everything stops. The waves stop, the wind stops blowing, the sky clears up, everything becomes calm again because Jesus commanded it to become calm again. All he simply said was, peace be still. And guess what everything did? Went silent. Everything went still. Everything was completely quiet. And so Jesus looks at the disciples and he says, why are you afraid? You don't have any faith? Like I'm right here in the boat with you. And instead of asking me to fix it, you panic and you, you try to do this, you try to do that. You forgot that I was here, first of all. You try to do this, you try to fix it, you try to, and I'm right here. 
And look how I just solved the problem. He's like, why are you doubting me? Why did you not have faith? You think I'm really going to let you drown? You think Jesus was going to let them drown? No. And not just that, but he's on the boat with them. So he wouldn't, you know. Yeah. So they were like, so when they saw what happened, the disciples were amazed. And they were just like, what just happened? Because they, when he said, peace be still, it's like everything stopped. And it was like nothing had happened before. Like the storm had completely died down. It went away completely. Like it wasn't just like, you know, everything was just crazy just a minute before. And so they were amazed and they were like, truly he is the son of God yet again. But right, didn't they say the same thing though when he walked on the water? They did. They said, truly he is the son of God. And he is, we know that he is the son of God, but it's like, and I told you before the disciples, it's like, they know it. They know that Jesus is the son of God. Right. But it's like, they doubt him a lot. Right. They, it's like, they, I guess you could say they don't realize that being that he's the son of God, he can do anything. Right. This storm was going on. And instead of them asking him to fix it for them, they start to panic. Right. And they automatically assumed the worst would happen and that they would drown. But little did they know that Jesus could fix the storm and which he did. He stopped it all and everything went calm. Everything was peaceful. Everything was quiet. And the Lord saw uh, he stopped the storm. And so the disciples, it's like they know the Lord. They know that he's God. But it's, it's you know, sometimes they forget that he is God. And so they'll start to you know, allow the outside situations to get to them and affect them. And they start to doubt God that he can do anything. That's just like with Peter walking on the water, right? He stepped out on the water. That in itself was a miracle. But the minute he looked at the waves, he completely forgot about the Lord and he started to sink. But that was because he took his eyes off of Jesus in that. And when he did, that's what started to happen. So this is a word for us, guys. We have to remember that our God is able to do anything that we need him to do, right? Even something that we might think, oh, that's a that's too small, right? That's too small. But the Lord can do it. Sometimes if I can't open something, I'll say, Lord, please give me strength so I can open it. And so some people might think that's small, but no, God can help us do the smallest thing and even big things. He can help us to do the biggest things. Like if you have a game, say, Lord, help me to win the game. Help me to play good on today, right? Lord, I need you to help to heal me. Lord, I need you to, whatever it is that we need God to do, we have to remember that he can do it. There is nothing that God cannot do, right? We are limited in our power and our strength. We can't do some things, right? Like we can't tell the storm to stop, but we serve a God who can. So that's the power of knowing God and being his children because we have access to him, meaning we can go to him and ask him for whatever it is that we need, right? Everybody doesn't have that privilege in the world, guys. Some people don't even know what to do when things happen in their lives. They don't even know how to pray. So we should thank God that we have the ability, the Lord has given us the ability to pray and we can go before him and ask him for what we need. We just have to remember that we can, right? Because sometimes we might run across something that's a little difficult and we may say, ah, I can't do it. But, and we forget, right? Because it happens. It happens to me as well. But we have to remember and not forget that our God is able, even if it's something that we don't even think is important. He thinks it's important, right? He's always thinking about us and he cares about every single detail of our lives. And so everything that happens in our lives, we can go to him about it. So the disciples you know, in that moment, they forgot that he was in the boat with them, right? They were trying to figure this out and get through this storm on their own. And they couldn't because they had forgotten. They forgot, oh, well, Jesus is right there with us. They had forgotten that quick that the Lord was with them. And so that's why Jesus said, why are you doubting me? Like, you think I'm really going to let you sm uh, to drown? He says, of course not. I'm going to let you drown, right? So this is our word, right? We can go to the Lord in prayer. Whatever it is that we need from him, we just have to ask him and he will do it. He always does it. That's the God he is, right? He wants to answer our prayers because that's who he is. Amen? Amen. Yep. So that's a short lesson today on Jesus stilling the storm. That's it. Our lesson was just talking about how he told the storm, peace be quiet. And this also is once again, him showing that he truly is God because creation has to obey him. When he told the storm, stop, guess what it did? It stopped. And so he is truly the son of God. And so tomorrow's lesson, we'll see what's called the transfiguration, 
which the Lord will reveal his true glory to only three of the disciples, though. Remember, I told you about the big three, right? We have the big three that saw Jairus' daughter be healed. Y'all remember who they were? Mm -hmm. Peter, James, and John, mm -hmm. right? And so they will get to witness this on tomorrow as well. So the transfiguration tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, we'll go into some more miracles that the Lord is performing because he's a miracle working God. Of course, we know he's the son of God and he's the way of salvation, but he is a miracle worker as well. Okay. All right, guys. So that is it. That was our lesson today on Jesus 